dear students in today's module we'll discuss about the psychoanalytic school of thought it's a very popular school and all of you might have heard about the name of sigmund freud he is known as the father of psychoanalysis so in this module let us see how the psychoanalytic school of thought has helped us to understand about our behavior if you remember structuralists were focusing on identifying the elements of the mind and functionalists were trying to understand the behavior focusing on how the mind is functioning so in order to understand these two concepts by structuralists and functionalists it is purely a subjective in nature you cannot see what the mind is about you cannot see how the mind is functioning so naturally they felt the subject matter of psychology postulated by structuralists and functionalists is more of a subjective experience when you have seen the structuralism and functionalism about focusing on structure of the mind and functions of the mind sigmund freud rejected their views and said it is not the conscious experience which will influence us a lot but it is the unconscious mind which plays a pivotal role in understanding the human behavior in this module we'll discuss about what are the main concepts given by the sigmund freud related to the elements of the mind or structure of the mind and how he compared it to an iceberg the second concept that he introduced is components of personality in terms of id ego and super ego then he also introduced the concept defense mechanisms and psychosexual stages however we can also say the psychoanalytic school has become very popular not only as a school of thought but also as an approach to theory of personality and also as a therapy in order to treat the mental disorders another contribution given by william james is theory of self james theorized the components of the self which he divided into two categories me and i me refers to a separate individual a person refers to when talking about their personal experiences it is me who has gone there so i am speaking about my experience and i am referring as if i am referring to the another person on the other hand i is the part of the self that knows who they are and what they have accomplished in life for example in the statement i know it was me who ate the cookie the me is the empirical self the one who does the acting so i ate that is the action whereas i is the self that is capable of thinking and reflecting i means pure ego it is what provides continuity between past present and future allowing us to view ourselves to have a consistent individual identity one brought about by the stream of consciousness that james first defined although the i cannot be further divided me can be further broken down into three sub categories that is a material self social self and spiritual self this material self about it consists of what belongs to a person that is body family clothes money etc the social self marks who you are in a specific social situation we tend to change our actions thoughts emotions words and mannerisms based on the current social situation or the people with whom we are interacting for example we act differently when at work as opposed to when you are out with your friends similarly the way we talk to our boss is different from how we talk to a coworker finally our spiritual self is who we are at our core that is it includes our personality values and conscience our spiritual self typically remains relatively stable throughout our lifetime together these aspects form the self that is the conscious entity capable of experiencing physiological responses emotions and thoughts william james contributions to the field of psychology run unparalleled to most other players in this field 
his theories, written works and foundational school of thought paved the way for decades of research and intellectual pursuits to come. Now, once you have understood the subject matter of psychology as given by structuralists and functionalists, another important school of thought has come up that is called psychoanalysis. You might have heard about psychoanalysis or you might have seen some movies with reference to the psychoanalytic therapies and the techniques. So, what this school of psychoanalysis is about? Let us try to understand this school. Psychoanalysis is a school of psychology founded by Sigmund Freud and hence he is known as the father of psychoanalysis. He developed a theory of human behavior based largely on case studies of his own patients. This school of thought emphasized the influence of the unconscious mind on human behavior. According to Freud, human behavior is deterministic that is it is all about how to gain pleasure and how to avoid pain. Hence, we can say psychoanalysis is both an approach to therapy and a theory of personality. Sigmund Freud also emphasized on unconscious motivation which indicates that the main cause of behavior lies in the unconscious mind. Freud's theory psychoanalysis maintains that human mind or mental life is like an iceberg. The smallest visible part of the iceberg represents the conscious mental experience of the individual. But underwater hidden from the view which floats that is a vast store of unconscious impulses, wishes and desires. Freud insisted that individuals do not consciously control their thoughts, feelings and behavior. Instead, these are determined by unconscious forces. Look at the slide which is showing the mental iceberg. The iceberg when it is dipped that in the water, the tip of the iceberg which you are able to see that is the conscious level. Your conscious thoughts, your conscious perceptions which you are immediately aware of that can be seen at the conscious level. Beneath the conscious level, the small portion that can still be visible is at the pre-conscious level. It contains certain memories and the knowledge that you stored. Whatever is there in the pre-conscious mind, immediately you may not be aware of what the content is, but with little effort definitely you will be able to retrieve the information. For example, if I ask you, at what time did you wake up today morning? Probably you are very conscious, you are very alert, immediately you can give the information. If I ask you like yesterday around 5 o'clock in the evening, what were you doing? It is not completely unconscious, but with an effort, with an ability to retrieve, you can recall what you were doing in the yesterday evening around 5 o'clock and then immediately you will respond to that. Then the third part which is the submerged part that is the unconscious level. So, this is the most dominant influence on our human behavior. Generally people feel conscious mind influences is a lot, but it is not the conscious mind according to Freud's understanding and his research. It is the unconscious mind which influences our behavior. When we say unconscious content, what will be there in the unconscious content? It is about your fears, the phobias that you have developed with knowingly or unknowingly, the violent motives or shameful experiences, any abusive events if you were the victim of abusive cases, then selfish needs, immoral urges, irrational wishes and unacceptable sexual impulses. All these things will be merged in the unconscious mind, but still they are active in some form or the other. Now, let us understand the next concept postulated by the Sigmund Freud. Freud believed that the human mind or personality was composed of three elements, the id, ego and superego. The id consists of primal urges while ego is the component of personality charged with dealing with reality. The superego is that part of the personality 
that holds all of the ideals and values which we internalize from our parents and culture right from our childhood. Freud believed that the interaction of these three elements was led to the complex human behavior. If you look at this slide to understand the personality as per the components of the psychoanalytic point of view that is id ego and super ego, it says I want to do it, I want to do it immediately. It is an instinct, very impulsive. Ego says just wait, do not be in a hurry, let us be realistic, let us think about the consequences. I will do it, but I will also think about the consequences. The third part super ego says like I should do it if it is accepted by the parents or accepted by the culture. So, this is how the interaction takes place between the components of the personality. And when you look at this slide, like all these three components of the personality which are very important, how do they operate, where do they operate. So, it is present from birth and operates at unconscious level and is driven by pleasure principle that is it strives for immediate gratification of the need or wants and desires. Whereas, ego operates at all the levels, it operates at the conscious level, at the pre-conscious and also at the unconscious level, but taking into consideration the realistic situations and the consequences as per the reality. The super ego which involves internalized moral standards and ideals that we acquired from both parents and society that is our sense of right and wrong in making judgments, it operates at both conscious and unconscious levels. So, we can see it is completely unconscious whereas, ego operates at all the levels and super ego operates at conscious and unconscious levels. Now, let us understand this from an example that is available in the slide. So, to understand like how id ego and super ego operates, it says I want to eat chocolate at this hour that is around 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the night. Ego says this is not the time to eat a chocolate, it is not good for health, but still if you are insisting have a small bar of chocolate, not the whole chocolate. Super ego says see I think I am on a super diet. The doctor asked me or the dietitian asked me not to take the chocolates. So, this is not the time to have a chocolate. So, this conversation between id ego and super ego and finally, like which one will be emerging as a successful one, whether it is id, id ego or super ego, it depends upon who is strong, which part of the personality is strong. According to Freud, the key to a healthy personality is a balance between id ego and the super ego. If there is imbalance, naturally the personality will be shattered. Another important concept developed by Freud is personality of an individual is developed through psychosexual stages. Children progress through five psychosexual stages during the development that is oral, anal, phallic, latency and genital. Probably you will be learning more in detail in another semester, but you can just remember the stages here. According to Freud, childhood plays an important role in the development of an individual. Childhood memories strongly influence the personality of the child. These memories can be positive, these memories can be traumatic. Another important contribution by Sigmund Freud is defense mechanisms which we use in order to relieve our stress or anxiety. These mechanisms are used by the ego in an attempt to resolve the conflict between id and super ego, so that personality can develop in a healthy manner. These defense mechanisms operate at unconscious level. Repression regression, compensation, sublimation or some of the examples of defense mechanisms. Psychoanalysis originated by Freud has become a therapeutic method for treating mental disorders by investigating the interaction of 
conscious and unconscious elements in the patient's mind and bringing repressed fears and conflicts into the conscious mind using techniques like free association, dream interpretation, analysis of resistance and transference, slips of pen and slip of tongue. Dreams are an important contribution of Freud. He turned dreams into object of scrutiny and developed theory for interpreting them. Interpretation of dreams is Freud's popular book in which he stated dreams express current wishes as well as unfulfilled childhood desires. According to Freud, dream work involves aspects like condensation that is different ideas are merged into a single image, displacement that is which thoughts are disturbing and which are less disturbing in our dreams, then representation how thoughts are representing different images and symbolization which objects in the dreams are representing sexual life. So, this is how like the analysis of the dreams is postulated by Sigmund Freud. However, the overriding importance that Freud placed on sexual and aggressive impulses caused much controversy both inside and outside the field of psychology. The most notable of Freud's famous students Carl Jung, Alfred Adler and Karen Horney broke away from their mentor and developed their own theories of personality. These three and their followers are often collectively referred to as neo-Freudians. Thus, the psychoanalytic approach continues to be influential in some form or the other after modified considerably over the past several decades by the neo-Freudians. As a reaction to structuralists and functionalists, the psychoanalytic field or the psychoanalytic school which has emerged with the Sigmund Freud as the father of psychoanalysis, he says it is not the conscious experience which is important. To understand the human behavior, we have to give emphasis on the unconscious mind because the repressed memories, the unfulfilled wishes, the shameful experiences, all these things will be influencing the human behavior a lot. In order to understand what is the content of the unconscious mind, he developed techniques like free association, dream analysis, resistance analysis, slips of pen, slips of tongue. The beauty of psychoanalysis is it can be used as a therapeutic approach, it can also be used as a theory of personality in order to understand the human behavior. Now, let us summarize what we have learned in this psychoanalytic school of thought. You might have understood what are the different views postulated by different theorists from different schools. Structuralists have focused on the structure of the mind, how the mind can be divided into different parts that is elements and introspection can be used as a technique to analyze the elements of the mind. However, as a reaction to the structuralism, the functionalism has emerged on the field of psychology. It says it is not the dissection of the mind or components of the mind which is important to understand human behavior, but we should understand the functions of the mind in order to understand the purpose of the behavior. You have pretty well understood that according to the psychoanalytic school of thought, compared to the conscious mind, it is the unconscious mind which is very dominant and influential in understanding human behavior. The content of the unconscious mind is very important in order to determine the human behavior. The unconscious mind might be having irrational fears, phobias, shameful experiences, abusive incidents, unfulfilled desires, unfinished tasks that is all these elements might be influencing our behavior. The content of the unconscious mind can be analyzed through psychoanalytic techniques like free association, interpretation of dreams, analysis of resistance, transference, slips of the pen, slips of the tongue. We also know that childhood plays an important role in the development of the personality and the role of the psychosexual stages as emphasized by the Freud which is very well determining the personality of the individual. We should know about the defense mechanisms that we use at the unconscious level in order to resolve the conflicts.